Hi, welcome to Taste This TV. I'm Chef Joe Simonera. We're here at a place in New York City called Tavola. And well, if you ever wanted a little bit of Sicily real close to home, this is the place to visit. Let's check it out. Okay, great. So we're here at Tavola with Nick, the owner. Buongiorno, chef. Buongiorno, come stai? Bene, bene. And we have Giancarlo. We can't forget the chef. He's the guy that's going to feed us today. Piacere, how are you? So we're here at this incredible restaurant, which is really like a farm-to-table restaurant. Simple, yes. Right? The mean, theory of Tavola behind our premise of cooking is based on wood-burning ovens that were made in Italy, and they're made out of volcanic clay from the Vesuvio volcano. As you can see. And, and I, I guess why don't we talk a little bit about these ovens, because sure. here's something you don't see every day, yeah. right? Now, because they are the largest wood-burning ovens in New York, and they but both combined weigh 7,000 pounds. So it's like having two cars on the floor, and these are my babies. So now you have Vesuvio and you have Etna. Ovens are usually named like ships and like boats, like the right. Mary Mac and the Mary Jane. In this case, my Vesuvio and my Etna. And what these ovens are, they're made from a family in Naples that specialize in oven making. And the domes are low, and one burns at 900, and one chamber is able to burn at 500 for two different types of food. And, that, and that's something that people are actually going to see, is that these ovens don't just cook pizza, but you throw entrees in there, like whole fishes and other kinds of meats Precisely. In, in, in this temperature, right? Precisely. And vegetables, which we're about to demonstrate the, the two different chambers and how the two different cooking processes actually come about in this restaurant. So it's not just a pizzeria. Mm -hmm. It's also, it's predicated on farmhouse cooking. We import our own olive oil from Sicily. It's pure nocellata olive oil uh, nice. from the Castelvetrano olive. And that based, and as well as fresh herbs, is the philosophy behind how we cook. And we basically shop market fresh food as often as we can. So what are we doing today? Okay, today, today I, want to, I want to dispel a few different uh, um, uh, mysteries in, at home with home cooks uh, as to certain things that are intimidating. For instance, the artichoke. What do you do with an artichoke a lot of times? Uh, and we want to demonstrate real quick how we do our oven roasted artichoke. So this is what they look like when we're done. And I'm going to show you a quick demonstration. John, if you can actually help me here. So you peel back the outer shells that are tougher until you get to the tender part. Right. And then basically what you do is you cut off the top and you can split it down the middle. When they're small, when the artichokes are small, you don't have to actually take out what's called the choke, this part yeah. here, because they're tender and they're small. This is a baby artichoke. Right. A larger artichoke, you want to spoon out the choke. In this case, And you not. can feel it's not that fibrous like a large one would be where you're like, ah, exactly. you know what I mean? So we don't have to go through all that. So Excellent. for these artichokes a la Romana, we're going to do a quick pesto of fresh herbs with a little bit of anchovy, a little bit of garlic. So... Here we have... And this, we have our, our mortar pestle, right? Yes. And this came from Genova. Where now, this is interesting. This is wood and actually not ceramic. That's correct. This is a true Genovese mortar This is a true wood. You don't see this much. I bought this from Genova myself. And what it does is instead of using a food processor, wow. this actually extracts the oils from the herbs without macerating them, without destroying the actual herbs. So and you do this here. I mean, being a, a large restaurant, which is so yes. busy, you take the time to That's do this. That's what we do. We, we stay close to tradition as much as we can. So in this case, we put just one clove of garlic, some fresh parsley, some mint. We have some mint, and we have some parsley, a little bit of basil. Nice. And what we do is basically uh, a little bit of Sicilian sea salt. Of course, you know, I'm partial to it because I'm Sicilian myself. A little bit of black pepper. And in this nice case, salt mines in Sicily as well. Mm, ah, yes, in Trapani, nice. right. The salt flats of Trapani are famous. And it's just a very popular fennel seeds. This is something that we use a lot in this particular restaurant. And some people shy against fennel seeds, right? People say, eh, I want them out of the sausage. But I find that they're a different taste if, if, if they go in here. Yes. They're not as... Yes, and by smashing them, too, or putting them through a, a, coffee, a coffee grinder, you'll find that they won't get stuck in your teeth, like Joe is saying, which most people don't like that, that aspect of it. So extracting, extracting the oils from, from the herb as opposed to putting them through a food processor, which could be quicker, but this gives you a much better effect. Yeah, I feel like you probably retain a lot of the flavor, too, because that food processor works on centripetal, you know, really high speed. Right. And it heat. sort of heats it up. And exactly. Yeah, Bravo. Not, uh, and you don't want heat because it affects the texture of the food. I like to use some Sicilian anchovy, just a little bit. You shouldn't have to taste anchovy. Most people don't like anchovy. But if you taste it, you did something wrong, that means you put too much. But a little bit of anchovy in here kind of opens it up. Uh, good Sicilian olive oil. Just kind of like, can I get a spoon, please? And you would say that this is cold-pressed. This is uh, extra virgin cold-pressed single varietal Sicilian olive oil from the Casa Vetrano olive. Hey. So this is a specific olive from a specific nice. region, only from the Valley of Belice, 
because there's certain different olives in Sicily, but this is only from Belice. Now look how that's coming together. That's really nice right there. That's beautiful. It's like very nice. If you can smell it, it's so fragrant and open, but with the anchovy and all the fresh herbs. Sorry. Oh, I hands. was about to lick it. <laughs> I said, that's TV. I don't want to. Okay. So, ecco, bravo. So, okay. So in this case, we have artichokes. And you don't really want to put much. You just want to just give it because it's very flavor. strong. Yeah, you got that whole garlic in there. You got the whole so garlic in the well. flavor. Nice. And you really want to really taste the artichoke. You don't want to like overpower the artichoke with too much pesto. But what this does is it really wakes up the artichoke. In this case, so we got a little bit of olive oil over all of them. Bravo. Echo. Uh, some breadcrumb that's been mixed with mm. some um, <clears throat> Romano cheese, breadcrumb and parsley, all mixed together. Ready? Wow, this, the smell is incredible. And, and it's, it starts off smelling like that, it always going to come out even better when it's cooked. <laughs> yeah. Again, so then we get, we put this in the, in, in the lower temperature oven in this case. Right. This is about what, 500? You about say? 500. Okay. It's going in the wood oven. Now we're going to do a benzino real quick. John, can you help me start doing that? Giancarlo is going to be doing, is showing you how we do a benzino. I'm going to start on the pizzas. I'm going to start showing you how we make some pizzas here. And also, uh, how that works out there. Now, well, talking about some of these ingredients that you have here, sort of reminds me of, of visiting the old country because uh, it, the color and the texture looks mm. as if you, almost you had it imported from, from Europe. Mm. Uh, what's the secret, especially with like, let, let's talk about this cheese that most people probably do not have here. Well, this is a, a Fior de Latte mozzarella. And it's made by the company called Liuzzi in Connecticut. I find it to be the best mozzarella for a wood-burning oven pie in this case. And it has the right amount of fat content and, uh, and color. Nice. And these go on top of your pizzas. This goes on top of the pizzas, which I'm about to show you in just a few minutes. We have two pizzas coming out for you today. One is going to be made with wild boar veal meatballs. Very good. Roasted peppers that we roast in our wood-burning oven. Sharp provolone, mozzarella, tomato, and basil. That's one pie. Then we have another pie called the Amalfi. The Amalfi is thinly sliced lemon, Blue claw crab meat, parsley, olive oil, wow. some Gruyere cheese, and it's a white pie. And it's a, it's a different take on a pie that you normally wouldn't see in most places. This is a fennel, as obviously most of you would know. This is something that we also use here. Um, we usually serve it with our um, um, whole roasted fish. In this case, it happens to be Branzino. It's an Italian sea, uh, sea bass, um, and we're going to be using some uh, fennel. So we're about to show you how to cut and prepare the fennel for those of you that are not familiar with it. So now, so you, but you roast this whole. We roast it whole, yes. And, and we, something, something that people could, put, could see just to make sure that the fish is fresh, which this is very fresh, oh. clean gills, the eyes are clear, really nice looking fish. This is about the size they always come at. That's about right. And like you said, Joe, what's important is that the eyes are clear and shiny. They're not opaque and sunken in. That's a sign of a really fresh fish. And also, when you press the fish and you let go, it should come up again. If it leaves an indentation, that means the fish it's been is hanging passed. around a little bit. People don't know, so how do I know if the fish is fresh? Touch it. Touch a fish, press it yeah. down, see if it snaps back. Look at back. the inside of the fish, the exactly. cavity, it's nice and fresh, not slimy. Right. We're going to be preparing the fennel. Basically, you want to just cut the fronds off like this, remove these. Although, these you could use for different parts of cooking, but for now, we're not. Okay. And in this case, we just I like to cut it down the middle. I like to take out the outer layer because it's a little bit tougher. Right. And maybe not as... This really has a, a unique, excellent flavor. You know, a lot of people, oh. I think, are a little scared to experiment with it. Mm. Uh, but really, in soups, anything braised, oh. baked, it, you I can't agree. go wrong with it. It goes well with almost uh, so many things, especially fish. And uh, like, like Joe said, too, it really wakes up a lot of different things. And it's hard to catch on. I mean, yeah. it's very popular in Sicilian cuisine in particular. I think it was an introduction from the Arabs, if I had to say. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of Arab influence. A lot of Arab influence on the island, exactly. Now, you, 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 you smell the fennel here, and it smells like black licorice. And... Oh, right. the, the, the thing about it is when you cook it, it doesn't taste like licorice, right? <laughs> no. So in this case with the Branzino, what we're going to do is we're just going to give a dousing of olive oil inside the stomach as well. Oh, Good quality olive oil. Look at that. Yeah, It's nice and green. Nice color. You want to salt it well. Some black pepper. Okay. And what I like to do is I like to lay the fennel in the same pan. By the time the fish cooks, the fennel will be ready on the crisp side, al dente, because Italians like to have their vegetables not too soft and not too hard. Al dente meaning to the tooth, meaning that when you're eating it, you could feel it on your teeth. I like to put a little bit of my pesto 
it kind of goes well with fish as well. And one thing uh, Nick does do, and he's, he's seasoning the inside of the cavity as well. It's not just the outside yeah. of the fish, it's inside. Right, and Joe makes a very good point, because what happens is when you're seasoning the cavity on the inside, it'll actually permeate as it's cooking, because it starts to steam. In this case, on the cavity, I like to put a little bit of a few lemon slices. Again, it'll open up, mm -hmm. just bust them open like that. A lot of people might think it, there's a lot of bones in there, but if it's filleted right, it, you're not going to get any. And once you get used to it, it's not so, not so difficult to it eat. It really is a clean fish. Excellent. Now, at the same time, those artichokes should be just about done, right, That's Nick? correct, yes. Giancarlo, per favor. What do you got over there, the stick? Como se dice? What do you call this? This is the stick. Is the stick. Ah, it's, it's a peel, actually. It's a, it's it's a, peel. It's a peel. It could be to keep the employees in line, maybe, well, you know, <laughs> Saturday night. We can't say that on the air, <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, go ahead. Am I on your way? Perfect. Wow, that looks beautiful. Look at that. Wow, very nice. And as you can see now, the caramelization on the artichoke, the, the olive oil and the breadcrumbs come together to give a crisp finish. And the artichokes, because they're small, a pretty much again al dente, not not too soft, and not too and not too and not too not too hard. So so, the fish we could put it in now. Very nice. That way we start making our pizzas. Yeah. Artichokes look fabulous. Eccola. And our fish goes in. Excellent. Okay. What's next? Pizza. Le pizza. pizza. Le you pizza want a, you want a dough? You want me to get you a dough? Yes, yeah, sure, Joe. Please help me out. So it's also the roasting roasting of local olives are very popular in farmhouse cooking in Italy. In this case, it's Sicilian. No a lot of olive. It's the same olive that the oil is made out of. If you notice, the olive has a character where it's not oval. It's actually round and squat with a peppery taste to the back of the throat. And it's usually baked with some olive oil, some fresh herbs. In this case, I like a little bit more fennel myself. Maybe another little pinch of salt. Right in the wood-burning oven. The wood permeates the flavor onto the olive and giving it a certain caramelization and texture as and well. And the flavor is not like you would think. Very vinegary, very acidic. No. It's more neutral flavor with the, with the taste of the olive oil. Precisely. It's and not the herbs. Right, exactly. Now, next is the pizzas, which we're known for here. So this is a dough that arises for 24 hours in the true Neapolitan style. So we're about to make what's called a pizza navoladan, the classic. Okay. Smack is a must, right? Oh, we got to smack it, you know? And Nick, you started off in the pizzeria. Yes, right? I've been making pizza since I was 15, and that's a few years ago now. Right. So, um, about five years ago or so? Oh, well, a little bit more than that, but anyway. And you, you would say you like a thin crust. Yes, it's thin. You can, see, you can almost see through it, but not quite. You want to get it uh, even. We're about to make the first pizza, which is with wild boar veal meatballs. Wild boar veal. Wood burning oven, roasted red peppers that we roast here, provolone, mozzarella, sarmanzano tomato, fresh basil, and here we go. We don't want to put too much sauce in the center, otherwise the pie gets soggy. Uh, first, a little bit of parmigiano to wake up the tomato, the liuzzi mozzarella. And that mozzarella is serious. Ah, it's beautiful. And here we have our wild boar veal mix. Very small pieces. And if we put them small enough, they'll cook evenly. If the pieces are too big and that rapid of a cooking, it'll, it'll still stay raw. So we want to make sure... Where do you get this? Do you grind this yourself? No, we actually get it from Esposito's Meat Market on the corner. One last thing, sharp provolone. It kind of wakes mm. up. It complements the pepper really well. Some fresh basil. Giancarlo, per favore. Facciamo una forno. There you go. I like it. No flour board, nothing. No, right in. And the true Neapolitan style. So we're about to make the second pizza, which is going to be lemon, blue claw crab meat. Actually, let me get this one a little wetter. Blue claw crab meat, fresh herbs, no tomato sauce in this case. It's inspired by a recipe from the Amalfi Coast. It's called La Malfitana, inspired by the Amalfi Coast in Naples. It's thinly sliced lemon, blue claw crab meat, fresh herbs and olive oil, a little bit of Gruyere cheese, and a touch of herb pesto. So here we go, stretching our dough. It's got a nice elasticity to it. Yep, because you know, it rises for 24 hours, so this dough is very rested. So when you eat this pie, it won't make you feel like your stomach is actually full and, and heavy. Now what do we have here? Ah, this is soppressata. 
So passata from Esposito's Meat Market, and we use it for a pizza called La Calabresa Bona, because in Calabria, so passata is made with red pepper in that region of Italy. So we call it La Calabresa, which is also a very big it's Nice and red throughout. You know, it's not just a spotty red flake here or there. So here's our blue claw crab meat, and we're going to season the crab meat, in this case, with Italian flat leaf parsley. Then we're going to quickly give it a, a quick chop. Now, would this be called a gremolata it, if you it, added a little garlic you, you in there, might, maybe? You might, you might call it a gremolata. You might call it a gremolata as well. Uh, in this case, it's just, it's just a quick marinade. We don't want to marinate it too long because what happens is it'll cook the fish if, right. if there's an acid involved. It'll become a ceviche. We don't want that. Exactly. We just want to flavor it. In this case, it's very close to the time that we're going to be using it. Okay. Okay. So in this there's case... that cheese again. Right. No, in this case, no tomatoes in this pie. It's just some cheeses. In this, case, in this case, we put some Gruyere cheese, which is a little bit different in this case. Our marinated crab meat. Lump. This lump blue claw crab. Again, the lemon slices, as you can see, are very thin. They have to be thin in order for them to cook. I like to put a little bit of breadcrumb. Again, that's that Sicilian influence. Always olive oil for the moisture. John Collins got it down pat. I'm waiting yeah. for like a, he's got it right down. How many of those do you think he makes? It? Wow, look at that. Ecco. Che bello. Wow, very nice. And what you're noticing on a pie, a true Neapolitan pie has spots, and this is called leoparding. This is important. When you see these spots, that means the sugars in the dough are actually ready as they should be. So the, the heat and, and, the, and the, the dough itself in its prime state creates these spots, which is called leopardies. That's what you want. The bottom is nice and crispy. Very nice. And we're about to taste that in a moment. In Italy, it's not, pizzas are not cut. But in America, they insist on having them cut, so we cut them in six. So they would grab that whole thing and just start uh, eating it? They actually use a knife and a fork in Italy, always okay. eat a pizza. Right. It's not an American thing. I like to have it in smaller pieces myself. You know, you know what, 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 what really surprises me is that pizzas may be that size, maybe a little bit bigger uh, in Italy, and people eat like two of them, <laughs> right? Well, the dough is lighter, again, because the gases are gone, because this dough rises for 24 hours. So it's not a heavy, yeasty dough in that sense. I mean, sense. I could eat. I sat down at a table with some uh, uh, fellow Italians over there, and uh, we've had toothpicks. They blow me away, eating two of those. And then they, then they want to go to the Cornetti, which is the, the, the uh, croissant, croissant shop with chocolates. The... Then they're eating three of those. I mean, then they just keep eating and eating and eating. Yeah. And I'm a big eater. I couldn't hang. They have a, a passion for food, obviously, yes. Can we go to pizza? Yes. So this is the second pizza, La Malfitana. Quick, that was like, what, four minutes maybe? Well, actually, the pizzas take 90 seconds, so it's a minute and a half. A true Neapolitan wow. pizza should not take more than 90 seconds, two minutes max. Anything more, that means your ovens are too cold. You're doing something wrong. So say 900 it's, degrees. Yeah, but it's very tricky. You have to, like, make sure that that pizza actually comes out. Ecco, La Malfitana. Look at that. Now that's a pizza. Again, beautiful leoparding spots. You have crispy. You can actually hear the crack in the crisp oh, yeah, in the pie. Wow. That's good. Seriously. A little, a little bit more olive oil lemon. because you never have enough olive oil. You never so. have enough of that stuff. Ecco So we're going to split this. And this will be for the camera crew later because I'm sure they're going to be hungry. Exactly. Um, now we got our fish. How's our fish doing? It? I think our Bronzino might be ready for a visit. Already it's starting to show signs ah, of caramelization. Yep, yep, yep. As you can see. Now, the great thing about these ovens nice. is, is that you actually get a crisp caramelization on the outside and moisture on the inside, which is unusual. So the fish is actually very moist and tender on the inside and actually creates a crisp outer shell nice. because of the dryness of the brick and the clay in the oven. <clears throat> I think it needs a little bit more time, however, <clears throat> to yep. finish it off. And those olives just sort of just kind of sit there until they're... Uh... Yes, exactly, Joe. It's a very slow cook on the olive. But already they're starting to show signs of, of browning and, wow. and caramelization. And, although they could use a little bit more time, I think, before we take them out. I think maybe a little bit, of, a little yeah, bit more, eh, maybe a little bit more pesto. Yeah, that pesto we can never be used really for a variety a, of different things. For that. That's what, I love pesto. Just have, sun-dried tomato pesto. Yes, big on, sure. Too. Right, exactly, Joe. There's so many different types of pesto. There's a classic Genovese basil pesto. But you can make pesto from a lot of different herbs as well. Well, we got two incredible pizzas. 
um, that we're going to feast on later. We got our artichokes, got our olives. How's our bronzino? The bronzino should be ready. We should be about to take it out right now. Echo. There you go. Now that's nice. Oh, now, now Woo. it's ready to roll. It's blistering. It's crispy. That's a nice it's looking fish. Look at that fennel. It's nice. Just, just what we Beautiful. want. Beautiful. Just what we want in that case of that particular part, that particular dish. We got our olives here. Great accompaniment. You need the uh, thingamajig? Right, got it over here. Our olives are ready as well. Nice. All right, let's try some fish. Ah, oh, finally. Let's see how the secret of this has got to so, be. Here we go. I'm going to serve my friend Joe. Now, you do a lot of table side here at all? No, or? we don't. Okay. Actually, when we do this fish, we, we advise our customers that we don't fillet. <laughs> we don't fillet our whole fish, so you have to be prepared. In this case, we'll do it for ourselves. Yeah. But, you know, it's not that hard. Not that hard. Once you see it done once, you basically want to remove the outer, the outer uh, <clears throat> spines and then just basically bust it at the head here mm -hmm. and... And then it, it just, should come right off. Yeah. It, should, it should release, exactly. See, I like the skin. The skin is where a lot of the flavor is. Mm. And a lot of the omega fatty acids are as well. So, I can. Very nice. Ah, that's cooked perfectly. About that. And you like the skin. I like the skin, too. You like it, too? Yeah. I do. It has a lot of the flavor. I have to give it, maybe. There you go. Now, can I, like, never, can have I like to lemon. finish a little bit of lemon. But also a little bit of yeah. olive oil as a finishing in its raw state. It actually usually kind of wakes up and brings up the fish as well. Nicola, a little bit for me. Giancarlo, you eating? Polybasia, John. Uh, yeah, too. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Sharing the fruits of the labor. We taste the result. Hey, good battle, huh? That shit's perfectly cooked. Yeah. That's beautiful fishing. Yeah, it's really nice. Look how flaky and, and very nice. Probably one of the most celebrated fish in Italian restaurants for its texture. And uh, just such a fine fish, really. Mmm. 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 Wow. Very good. Very good, my friend. Mm -mm. Flaky. Great texture. Some oven roasted olives as well. Mm. Very good. Compliments to fish, very good. Thank you, thank you, Joe. Coming from you, that's a, that means a lot. Excellent, excellent. Well, I was really impressed. You're Ninth Avenue, New York City. Yes, Ninth Avenue and 37th Street in Manhattan. Mm. Check them out. Tav Tavola. Tavola. Tavola in Italian simply means table. Okay, so we're here on 9th Avenue at Tavola. Nick, thank you so much for having me down Thank you, here. It was Joe. An absolute pleasure. We're an honor to John have Collin. you here. Thank you. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Job. Thank you bye. Well, that's going to end it for this segment of Taste This TV. I'm your host, Chef Joe Simonero. Remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this.